Yo, what's up guys? Rich on Touch Loops here. Welcome to part two of our Creating the Sounds of Krung Bin. In episode one, we went over how to get the drums and bass sounding, similar to that kind of vibe, and also how we laid out the session. So we're talking my analog routing setup in terms of using auxiliaries, what we did in terms of mixing the bass, and then also a combination of using one shots loops and program stuff to get the drums kind of sounding in that 70s vibe. Today we're going to be looking at guitars and FX. chorus line is a little bit more rolly. Awesome. So DI bass. But again, wanting to go for that live instrument feel, that kind of like 70s vibe. I'm going to reach for a, an Ampeg every time. It's just got a monstrous bottom end. It's huge. Really simple, barely any dials, but the difference in tone and difference in vibe is just massive. So let's listen to it before there's any plugins, and then we'll add them one at a time. We can go over those. Good sounding DI, loads of bottom end, just zero interest to be honest. So add the amp. So straight away for me, that's feeling focused it's adding some low mids it's adding some a lot of mid-range and a little bit of tops because where the treble's been pushed it's just making it feel like it's from an actual amp and not plugged directly into our computer we're then going into a tape machine just because it's part of the story we're not slamming it but as we know tape brings a little bit of bump at the low mids a little bit of sub and then also a bit of compression which is exactly what we want and then we're going into our mix rack Again, as we've always been doing, we go into a virtual channel, we're pretending we've got a desk. We then do some serial compression. I love the I love the distressor. I think it's really flexible. I think it's some it's an underrated piece and it offers so much tonal characteristic options. So in this case, what we're doing is we're having some gain reduction, but we're also using distortion mode on it as well, which is going to give us more harmonics, a bit more vibe to the bass. And if you listen to Krungerbin tracks, their basses are quite mid, quite mid heavy, and they're all about no clarity and vibe. So we can kind of go for a little bit of that. So let's listen to it now. Cool. Distressor into a 2A, classic combination. Distress is doing the hard work and the attitude. 2A is just pinning it a little bit. And then I went into a Neve style EQ just with a boost at. So we've got 10 dB at 1.6K. Really wanted to get that clarity, that finger noise and that rattle, the kind of wooden tones that you find in the bass, exactly what I'm looking for. And I think that did a great job. So if we listen to those two together, as you can see, easy way to solo them. I've got my groups, let's check them out. Awesome. Sounding, sounding killer. Let's move on to the guitars. There's quite a few different layers, techniques and styles, so let's have a spin through and uh, check it out. Thank you. 
cool. And then it just goes back around again for the chorus. So let's have a look. What do we got? So because we've used hardware and pedals to record the guitars, I thought it might be quite cool to give you an overview of exactly what pedals I've used. So first pedal, JHS Clover preamp. I was looking to push the amp a little bit harder just so we could get that cool edge of breakup sound like you'd expect from someone like Cromwin. Next, QCAT. It's a auto filter, instantly gives you the vibe of the 70s, gives you that psychedelic feel, kind of a nod to Tom Mish in a way and that kind of sound, but pure psychedelia. Delay from Walrus Audio, sounds killer, has that analog tone to it, it's got a nice filter dial on it to get the delays out of the way, and yeah, I mean, it's great. Then last in the chain is this cool little number from Electro Harmonics, which is their Hall of Fame reverb, I'm using it for spring because, you know, we need it. Right, so intro guitars, a little bit of compression. As you can see from the signal, um, we were pushing the preamp quite hard, so naturally the amp was compressing, but this is just to give it a little bit more control. We're using the Waves Renaissance Axe plugin, which is outrageously simple, but it just seems to pin guitars in a really nice way. Also, Waves have a sale on really often, so you can grab it for $30, $50. It's a great investment, and it just does wonders with guitars. So what we've got here is um, two recordings of a drony type riff, which I thought set the scene really nicely, building towards the chorus. As you can see, I've recorded it twice, so when we pan them left and right, it's nice and clear, and it's super wide. I'll take the filter off so you can check out exactly what's being played. <laughs> Okay, sounding, sounding vibey, sounding psychedelic. It sounds like I clipped them on the way in as well, but you know, we're all about attitude on this, uh, on this demo, so who cares? EQ, nothing much, but as we all know, API loves guitars, 1.5K, that's just the go-to guitar frequency, as we know. There's something cool about using this EQ. It's incredibly simple, and it just seems to have the frequencies I like, and that just seemed to work really nicely with guitars. That's why I reach for this every time. So we've got a little bit of EQ. We're adding some 5K. We're taking out a little bit of 100, just because we've got a bass guitar playing at the same time. We don't want these things to be clashing. Again, the filter's doing the work to give us this kind of like ethereal build-up, if you will, because we're going from the intro into the verse. And then, as you can see, I didn't want them to get in the way in the chorus, so took them out of the way. Use the filter, it's your friend. As we move on, we've got these skanks. Again, lean, leaning on that dub influence, so let's listen to them with no effects. Cool. being sent to a little bit of reverb, a little bit of the Benson delay that I spoke about earlier. Let's look at the chain. 3A, love this compressor again on guitars, incredibly simple. I'd either use this or I'd use the Axe. There's no dials. It does exactly what you want it to do. I, why could you complain? Cool, that's going into a H delay. If you turn off this one, let's see what it's doing. Ping pong, 90 milliseconds, just adding that kind of classic 70s slap back. Let's listen to it. Just giving us a little bit of vibe, a little bit of Beatles-esque tone, in fact, into analog claps, my favorite preset on the Echo plugin in Ableton. Again, it looks like we've got some automation going off, so let's look at what it's doing. Not use until later, just keeping the feedback the same. Very simple, and then a little bit of side chain, just because I want to tuck everything in. Okay, to the chorus guitars. Record it solo, it's not really a solo, it's a lead line, but it's 
it's a combination of tone and note choice for me, this one. I find with Krungerburn that they really are leaning on this eastern kind of area. So they're, they're playing traditional scales, but they're also playing quite modal. So they're pulling notes that you wouldn't traditionally hear in a pop song, like I mentioned earlier. So we're flattening things or we're sharpening things. By doing this, we kind of get chromatic runs and we get quite abstract feelings and instantly it transports us to, to the east, India, Southeast Asia, those kind of areas. This is also really important when trying to get that feel, I think. If you really want to sound like that band, you've got to lean on those notes and you've also got to get the tone right. So if we turn these two things off, we can hear it. This is coming straight out of the amp and the pedals. <laughs> So pretty hectic, quite a bit of mayhem. Again, it's pulling these abstract note choices. It's clipping a little bit, but we don't care because it's fun. EQ, dipping out some of the harshness. <clears throat> Got a few resonant points that we didn't like. So this one's at 300, one at nearly 900, and one at 3K. It was just getting a little bit intense, so we pulled them out. <laughs> Just clears things up a bit, especially with the drums. And then we've got H delay again doing slap. <laughs> Sound pretty wild. So, as you saw earlier, quite a lot of pedals were used to get this sound. And it sounds, in my opinion, it sounds cool. It's, it's really close to the band. It's got that tone, it's got that feel, and it, it kind of, you know, takes us back into that world. So what I did was I've also created an in-the-box version that takes a little bit of the lick. And just to show you how you can build that up yourself and how if you don't have an amp and you just need to track DI, you can get somewhere and not feel too disheartened. So let's have a listen. In my chain, I've got an amp. We need it because it's DI. Uh, tape machine, mix rack, we've talked about, 3A, go to compressor, springs, we need that feel. And then also, I've used a little bit of this envelope, or it's a kind of virtual wall, auto wall, wall, if you will, from Waves. So let's turn these off and listen to them one at a time, and then we can build it up and see if we can get close. So, DI. <laughs> Obviously, it's got a little bit of a send, but as you can hear, it, it sounds hideous. But it's got a lot of high-end information. It's got a little bit of body to it. It's a good starting point. It's a good, strong signal. It's loudish, poorly played, but what can you do? Let's have a listen to the amp. Cool. Instantly, starting to feel like a guitar. We've got an amp with a little bit of drive. You know, they've got that 70s push thing, which we're going for. Uh, it's got a cab, so it's actually softening it. It's still a tiny bit harsh, but now it's starting to feel like we're in the world of guitars. Tape machine. Yep, a little bit of compression and body from the tape machine. Then if we look inside our rack, we've got a Neve preamp. So we're looking for some harmonics and a little bit of drive from this. Then we're going into our SSL compressor. Again, we've been trying to recreate the sound of this SSL desk, so it all ties in nicely. And then last up, API EQ. As we know, API and guitars just go beautifully hand in hand. So this is what we're gonna use. Let's see what the EQ is doing. We'll take it out first. And then we'll try it. Looks like we've got a boost at 1.5K, always a classic for the guitars, and then just rolling off a little bit of the top from that harshness. It's thickening the guitar. It's completely taking it out of that in the box feel and it's putting it into a cool world. I wanted a touch more control. That's when my 3A comes in, super easy to use. We've got two dials. One of them does the reduction, one of them does the volume. You can't go wrong. Then we're gonna go into the spring. 
Again, we're going through the presets, and this just sounded vibey, exactly what we're looking for. So let's listen to it. <laughs> gives us that classic spring tail, those kind of like pulses and just all out madness, everything we're looking for in this scenario. As you can see, I've EQ'd it a little bit, got rid of some of the tops, got rid of some of the bottom as well, so it's a little bit cleaner. Made the decay a bit shorter because I didn't want to get totally lost in what was going off. And then I thought for vibe, let's go wah. Nothing screams psychedelic guitars like a wah. And an auto wah even better, we don't have to touch it, it does the job for us. So let's listen to it now. Right, last up, effects. I thought this was, could be quite a cool thing to do. This is me just recording a single harmonic on my guitar. Again, I'm going to turn this off and then we can listen to it just as it is. We'll turn off these sentences as well. Uninspiring, but really cool source tone. So, what have we done? First, we've got all these sends on it. We might as well use them. You know, we're trying to live in this world together. It's all about sharing the effects. So, with the effects. Vibe, but, you know, we can do better. Add the reverb. How, what we've gone for. Pretty long decay time. Full stereo. We really want that psychedelic thing. We've got sidechain for my drums. And then we've also got everyone's favorite space echo on it. A little bit of automation on the intensity again. We want to push the space echo into oscillation. We want it to go a little bit wild. This is the perfect thing to do it with. Let's listen to that in the mix. last section this is our vamp and what i've done is i've used these same harmonic notes pretty bland on their own but decided to use ableton's pitch options so as you can see this one goes up five semitones down five down seven back to where we are so we can start to build this kind of sequence if you will just from these harmonics so let's listen to those Cool, incredibly simple, but very effective. And then finally, because we're doing psychedelic, we're doing dub, we're doing 70s, we need noise running underneath it. Let's use rain effects, why not? Does what it says on the tin, really simple. Only thing to note is, I thought it could make quite a cool riser. So if you're looking for a riser and you've got a noise channel running, why not automate it? Let's listen to it. A little bit of drama, and it goes really nicely with the fill. Cool, and that's everything. So hopefully you picked up some cool tips on this and some ideas that you might be able to use. It'd be incredible if you could like and subscribe, and please do comment below with any ideas that you might have, things we've missed, bands that we should cover, and any topics. We've had so many comments on the previous two videos for John Hopkins and Arca, and I promise you we will revisit Arca and do some more things. She's an incredible producer, and we, we, you know, we can't miss out on that one. 
But anyhow, if there's anything that comes to mind, anything we've missed, any techniques, any DAWs we should cover, anything you don't quite understand, put some comments below, like I mentioned, and we'll get to those. This is a series we really want to be pushing, and it seems that you guys like it. So if we can improve these, we'd love to know. Thanks.